Yeah, yeah. Well, my lords, I'm going to risk the mood of the house because I am going to start in defence of the iPod because it's been mentioned a couple of times or MP3 players and uh, it was something that obviously didn't exist when I was young and became uh, a great uh, enthusiast of, uh, of popular music uh, at, at the time and yet I looked just before I came into the chamber and I have 1,269 different tracks on my iPod of what I believe is the best music uh, in the world. And what an iPod means, or an MP3 player, is that when I'm mowing the lawn, when I'm doing my ironing, and I do do my uh, ironing, uh, when I am doing mundane tasks, I can listen on shuffle to an extraordinary mixture of music in a way that was never ever possible before, whether it's from Manfred Mann and the Doors through to Spandau Ballet and Level 42, even to Kasabian and Gorillas, and that maybe is a rather narrow form of uh, taste in music, but that's a fantastic thing that we're actually able to do. And given the fact that we have uh, my noble uh, friend uh, Baroness Randerson and her, uh, in her fantastic uh, maiden speech mentioned that uh, the, the Welsh Assembly, I, I was also part of uh, an assembly, the European Parliament, that had more than one language, and so you had the excuse to put on earphones during uh, those parliamentary <laughs> sessions, but no one knew actually what you were listening to. And uh, that's one of the, the tragedies perhaps of this house and, uh, and uh, the, the, the other one, that, uh, that we don't have uh, that excuse. Of course, I always used to listen to um, I, uh, iPods uh, on, on my iPod of, uh, of, uh, of, of Radio 4 podcasts, uh, of, of course, rather than music at the time, but, uh, or, and, and of course those, those debates. But that is only one section of, of music. And uh, in December, I, I went to the uh, O2 Arena, and there we had the first time I've ever been to that. And you had a fantastic large vent live music. In that occasion, the Scissor Sisters, which I uh, listened to with my uh, eldest daughter. A fantastic event. But those are only two dimensions of music. And the reason I really wanted to be a part of this debate and just take a very small part of this debate was the fact that my road to Damascus, or in this case my road to Donegal, was when I went on a holiday for one week to the Republic of Ireland a couple of years ago. And we went there for the scenery, we went there for, uh, to see friends and, and relatives, we went there to see uh, the uh, culture and to enjoy the Guinness of Dublin. But the thing that I remember most was visiting the villages of rural Ireland, Ireland and the towns of uh, Western Ireland in the evenings in particular. And the thing that rang out, the thing that really struck me so strongly and leaves those <laughs> memories was the pubs and the restaurants and all the other places where people gathered, a huge proportion of those had live music performed by local people in huge styles and different types of music. And it is that memory that made me think, what, why is the, is the United Kingdom, when I come back, is it so barren in terms of that form of creativity and in that form of entertainment. And of course, one of those reasons is that we have a very, very prohibitive legislative structure and licensing structure that we have to uh, surmount, that we have to pass through in order to uh, be legal in terms of live music performance in this country. One of the things that uh, I believe to my soul is that music is one of the greatest things that we as human beings enjoy. Mm -hmm. It is a liberation. It is something that can take us out of uh, troubles or things that we're thinking about and take us into a different world. And there's no better way of experiencing that. There's no better way of bringing uh, our friends and our children, our colleagues up through being able to perform in that way than being able to have 
live music in small venues. And that's why I'm absolutely delighted to speak in this debate and to support the purposes of this bill and congratulate my noble friend, uh, Lord uh, Clement Jones, on having introduced it to this House again.